The Morceau Symphonique, or Symphonic Piece, by Alexandre Guimont, is one of the most standard of all standards for the trombone, and rightfully so, as it showcases some of the best of what the trombone can do, from soaring, epic, haunting melodies to really exciting technical passages. If you can learn the Guimont and play it really well, it can give you a wonderful foundation for French music in the early 20th century, especially the examination and contest pieces that came out of the Paris Conservatoire, which is numerous, numerous pieces for the trombone and many other wind instruments as well. For many years, the Paris Conservatoire Trombone Curriculum included an end-of-the-year contest and examination, very similar to maybe the end-of-year juries that happen in universities and conservatories even today. The examination, which ultimately culminated in a contest, required all the trombonists at the Paris Conservatoire to prepare and perform the same piece. And for long stretches of the Paris Conservatoire's history, they would actually commission a new piece every year that the trombonists would have to learn and play. Many of the composers who were asked to write these pieces were connected to the conservatory in some way. Maybe they were faculty, maybe they were alumni or otherwise connected. This was very important in the history and development of many wind instruments, including the trombone, and it's why we have so many wonderful pieces from the late 1800s and early 1900s from Paris-based composers. This contest provided some of the most important works for the trombone and includes some works by composers that might not have otherwise written for the trombone. You think of composers like Gobert or Stoyavsky or Sansons or Salzedo, many others. This is also why many of the pieces from this era have a very similar format. Almost all of them start with a slow lyrical section and then move into a fast technical section. It's why almost all of them have a couple of really low notes and a couple of really high notes. They needed to put the students at the conservatory through a very similar kind of challenge so that they could judge them fairly and equally. It's also why many of these pieces are about seven minutes long because the jury would hear the piece played over and over, maybe in the course of a day or an afternoon. In the case of Guimont, he was a faculty member at the Paris Conservatoire on organ. He wrote two symphonies with organ, and they are still programmed and performed by major orchestras to this day. I encourage students to go look up recordings of those performances to get an idea of Guimont's compositional style. My first piece of advice is about the opening lyrical section, which is, in my opinion, one of the very best that's ever been written for the trombone. I often hear young students sort of rushing through it and not taking their time and being very strict with the time. My advice is to be patient, let the music breathe, and get every drop of emotion that you can out of these lines. Throughout this lyrical section, Guimont uses a technique called delayed resolution of harmony, where he composes a note, especially at the beginning of a measure, that doesn't fit in the harmony of that measure but then it resolves to a note that does fit in the harmony. Every time that happens, those are the emotion notes, the pain notes, and I try to stretch those and lean into those dynamically to really get all of the emotion that I can out of it. Second, if you want to be comfortable playing in six flats, which you have to at the beginning of this piece, you're going to need to practice in six flats outside of your preparation for the guimont itself. Of course, that means scales, arpeggios, interval exercises in G flat major and E flat minor. But I also encourage my students to find other pieces of music that are also in six flats. Go through your Bordoni book, go through your etude book and find some things that are written in six flats so that you really become comfortable in, the, in those key centers. That's a little bit different than the B flat, E flat, F and C major that we're used to as trombonists. 
If you have trouble finding pieces actually written in six flats, you can do something that I and my students do, which is play tunes by ear in those keys. If you spend several weeks picking your favorite melodies and playing them in G flat major or E flat minor, then you're going to be immersed in all of those notes in fifth position, and you're going to be using B flat in fifth position, which you're going to need to do in the guimont as well. Third, there are obviously tons of scales in the main melody of the allegro sections of this piece, and so you're going to need to practice those scales in that pattern that we all use for auditioning for Allstate and things like that. The issue is, when you perform the piece of music, they don't need to sound like Arben's exercises and they don't need to sound like you're auditioning for Allstate. They need to sound like music. And so when you practice your scales, make sure that you're doing them with musical and artistic inspiration. How do these scales sound if they are heroic? How would they sound if they're angry? How would they sound if they're light and carefree? Most of us do not practice our scales in this way. We practice them strictly as an exercise and not as an artistic endeavor. So that's my advice, is to make sure that your scales sound like music. This piece has been very important in my life and career. It was the first piece I ever performed in front of an audience with a piano. It was my college audition piece, and I know it's gonna be an important part of your career as well. I hope you find a lot of enjoyment as you prepare this piece, and I hope you found some things in this video helpful to you as you prepare the Guimont Morceau Symphonique.